The lake has always been there, a strange part of our otherwise mundane suburban town. It's not particularly large or impressive, yet it has always been shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Since the 1960s, it's been strictly off-limits to the public. No explanation was given, just a stern order from the federal government that set our little town into speculation. Of course, the more they kept us away, the more we desired to know. There were stories. Some claimed that during the Cold War, a secret government project went wrong, contaminating the lake with strange chemicals or some form of radiation. Others believed it was the site of an alien landing, the water supposedly holding some extraterrestrial artifacts. Then there were whispers of a more supernatural nature. Rumors spread about people who disappeared near the lake, only to be found days later with no memory of their ordeal. They would mutter about eerie lights under the water and a strange humming sound that made their heads spin. But of course, these were all rumors. No one knew for sure what was going on because the government remained tight-lipped. Armed guards were stationed around the lake, their stern faces showing no emotion, revealing no secrets. The fence stood as a physical and symbolic barrier between us and the truth. No one dared to question it openly, but the curiosity bubbled in our town. Every night, I would stare at the lake from my bedroom window, my mind swirling with theories, my heart filled with an insatiable curiosity. In the quiet of my room, I found myself drawn to the window once again, eyes fixated on the forbidden stretch of water in the distance. The moon hangs high in the sky, casting a silver glow over the lake, making it appear even more mysterious than usual. My reflection in the glass stares back at me, full of curiosity and apprehension. I've been toying with the idea of going there for years, of trying to uncover its secrets, and tonight the itch is stronger than ever. I can't help but wonder, why is it so guarded? Why the secrecy? I glance at my clock. It's late past midnight. My parents are sound asleep, and the town is bathed in the soft glow of streetlights. It's now or never. The anticipation courses through me like electricity. I can't suppress the surge of adrenaline. I make up my mind. I'm going to the lake tonight. I'm going to finally see what's on the other side of that fence. I pull on my jacket, grab my flashlight, and pocket my old Swiss army knife, just in case. With one last look at my reflection, I take a deep breath and climb out of my bedroom window, setting off for the lake. The walk to the lake is filled with a blend of excitement and fear. It's a cool night, the kind where you can see your breath in the crisp air. As I approach the fence, I feel a mixture of thrill and nervousness. The fence is high at least 10 feet with an extra two feet of coiled barbed wire at the top, a menacing deterrent for anyone daring enough to try and scale it. Every so often, there's a sign fastened to the fence, clearing, no trespassing, government property in bold, ominous letters. Despite its age, the fence still seems solid, almost impenetrable. I begin to walk along the fence line, my flashlight's beam dancing over the rough terrain and cold metal links. The night is quiet, broken only by the rustle of the wind in the trees and my soft footsteps on the dewy grass. Then I see it. It's subtle, barely noticeable if you're not looking for it. It's a hole. Torn at the base of the fence, just wide enough for a person to squeeze through. A feeling of excitement runs down my spine. Here it is, my ticket to the secrets that lie beyond. The mysterious lake is just a few steps away, its secrets waiting to be revealed. I glance around, assuring myself of the solitude before taking a deep breath and squeezing through the gap. As I emerge on the other side, the reality of my daring act starts to sink in. As I step away from the fence, my heart pounds like a drum in my chest, and the full view of the lake unveils itself before me. The lake, in all its forbidden glory, appears even more mesmerizing up close. The cool breeze sweeps across its surface, creating ripples that distort the moon's reflection. The lake is an almost perfect oval, surrounded by sparse woodland. Its water looks dark and unfathomable, holding secrets beneath its calm surface. A few reeds poke out from the water near the shore, swaying gently in the breeze. I take a moment, standing at the edge of the water, just observing. The moonlight makes the water's surface gleam like a sheet of black glass adorned with millions of tiny diamonds. The forest around it is quiet. As I approach the water's edge, my sneakers sink slightly into the damp ground. I can hear the distant hooting of an owl, the soft lapping of water against the shore, and the rustle of leaves in the slight wind. I stop just at the edge where the water meets the land, looking out into the mysterious expanse. It's peaceful, 
and for a moment I forget about the rumors, the guards, and the fence. Here, it's just me and the lake. With a deep breath, I start to take off my shoes and socks, tucking them safely under a nearby bush. The cold air bites at my exposed skin, but it doesn't deter me. With one last look at the moonlit water, I step in. The moment my toes meet the water, a chill runs up my spine. It's colder than I anticipated, but not unbearable. I take a hesitant step forward, then another, feeling the lake's bed beneath my feet, a mixture of soft mud and pebbles. I wade deeper, the water reaching my knees, than my waist. It feels strange, an odd mix of fear and exhilaration, like I'm both invading and being invited into this secret world. The lake is still around me, the only sound is the soft splash of my movements and the distant hum of the nocturnal creatures. I keep going until I'm chesty, my skin prickling in the cold. With a final glance back at the shore, I take a deep breath and dive under. The world changes instantly. It's colder, quieter, and somehow more peaceful. I kick off from the bottom, breaking the surface with a gasp. But then, something unexpected happens. The once calm water around me begins to churn, and suddenly a whirlpool forms seemingly out of nowhere. I can feel a powerful pull tugging at me, dragging me down into its vortex. My heart hammers in my chest as I try to swim against the pull but it's futile. I try to yell, but the water rushes into my mouth, choking my words. I thrash and flail, trying to keep my head above the water, but the pull is too strong. The last thing I see is the moonlight dancing in the troubled surface of the lake before everything goes black. As I open my eyes, my surroundings seem to swim into focus, and I find myself in a place that is as mesmerizing as it is terrifying. It's a maze of sorts, sprawling and massive, the likes of which I've never seen or even imagined. The ground beneath me is cold and hard, uneven with jagged rocks and pebbles. I run my hand over the surface, feeling the cool dampness seeping into my skin. Above me, the ceiling stretches far up into the darkness, hidden in the shadows. Occasional stalactites hang down, their pointed tips glistening in the faint light. The cavern walls are towering, seemingly extending into infinity formed of a dark, almost black stone. They're jagged and rough, filled with indentations and crevices that twist and turn, disappearing into the darkness. Here and there, patches of luminescent fungi cling to the walls, casting an otherworldly glow over the surroundings, their soft light reflecting off tiny droplets of water that slowly drip from the ceiling above. The air is cool and damp, hearing the scent of the earth after rainfall and something I can't quite identify. It's a mixture of mineral and something metallic, a distinct smell that's not unpleasant, but strange. In the distance, the cavern extends into numerous tunnels, each one disappearing into the darkness. The silence is profound, the only sound being the occasional drop of water hitting the floor, creating a faint echo that bounces off the cavernous walls. Stumbling to my feet, I look around and my heart pounds in my chest. This isn't possible. Yet here I am, standing in what appears to be a place of cavernous tunnels, completely alien from anything I've ever seen. I call out, but there's no response, just the echo of my own voice bouncing back at me. As I take my first steps into this place, I can't help but wonder if this is the secret that the lake has been hiding all these years. I'm standing at the entrance of a tunnel, its darkness swallowing the weak light offered by the luminescent fungi. My heart is a wild drum in my chest, echoing the rhythm of a primal fear I can't shake off. I glance over my shoulder, back at the tranquil pool of water from which I emerged. Its surface is smooth, reflecting the dim, otherworldly glow of the surrounding fungi. The image looks distorted as if viewing reality through a warped lens. A familiar shiver of fear weaves its way up my spine at the sight of it, a daunting reminder of the bridge I've crossed into the unknown. I know I probably shouldn't, but my curiosity is too much to ignore. I have to learn more about this place and see if I can learn where I am. I step into the tunnel, the sound of my footsteps echoing off the ancient rocky walls. The tunnel twists and turns, leading me further away from the water, further into the unknown. The walls close in and the path narrows and then expands again. I stick to the right wall, an old trick I once heard for navigating mazes. I hope that it works here too. The luminescent fungi create a dim blue-green light that stretches out ahead of me, throwing distorted shadows that dance and flicker with my every move. Occasionally, I see movement in the corner of my eye, but when I turn, there's nothing there. Just my imagination, my mind trying to fill in the dark blanks. 
as I walk, my fingertips brush against the rough stone wall, the surface cold and damp. I can feel the texture change under my hand, sometimes smooth, sometimes jagged. Every now and then, I pass other pathways branching off from the main tunnel. I glance down each one, there are dark depths filled with the promise of the unknown, but I stick to my path. I come across an open area, a cavern larger than any I've seen before. The ceiling is high, covered in countless stalactites. It's like an inverted forest of stone. In the center of the cavern stands a towering stalagmite, rising like a monolith from the ground. The sight takes my breath away, reminding me, despite the terror, of the eerie beauty of this alien place. I cross the cavern, my footsteps echoing in the vastness. The grout here is smoother, almost polished. The light from the fungi bounces off the shiny surface, creating a collection of colors that shimmer and shift as I move. Reaching the other side, I find another tunnel leading onward. There's a slight incline, and I find myself climbing upward. The air feels a bit thinner, a bit cooler. The path curves around, and I feel a slight breeze, a natural airflow, an indication of an exit possibly. Suddenly, a noise unlike anything I'd ever heard before fills the tunnel. It starts off as a low rumble, growing steadily louder until it reverberates through the very core of the tunnel, shaking the ground beneath my feet. It's a roar, guttural and monstrous, resonating with such force that I can feel it vibrating in my chest. The sound is a terrifying blend of growls and screeches, like the unholy offspring of a lion's roar and the scream of an eagle, amplified by the confines of this place. It echoes off the walls, multiplying in strength until it's impossible to discern its source. The noise ricochets around me, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at the same time. I freeze as my heart pounds against my ribcage. A primal part of my brain screams at me to flee to escape the monstrous source of the roar. But another, more analytical part of me realizes that any movement, any sound I make, would be a beacon for the creature. I press myself against the cold, damp wall of the tunnel, willing myself to blend into the shadows. My breaths come in short, quiet gasps as I try to steady my nerves. The echoes of the roar eventually fades, replaced once again by the stifling silence. It's a silence that now feels ominous. With my senses on high alert, I strain to pick up any further sounds, any clues as to where the creature might be. But all I hear is the sound of my own heartbeat thundering in my ears and the soft drip of water somewhere in the distance. I take a moment to steady myself, catch my breath, and reel in my beating heart. My body is flooded with adrenaline, the instinctual fight or flight response kicking in to overdrive. I crouch down with my back pressed against the cold, damp stone of the tunnel. I close my eyes, attempting to slow my racing heartbeat. In the pitch darkness, I tune into my other senses, straining to pick up any sounds beyond my own ragged breathing. Silence. It's all I can hear, but it's no longer comforting. The silence now carries a threat, a potential prelude to another terrifying roar, or the stealthy approach of a predatory creature. I take a deep breath, and then another. Slowly, the frenzy in my veins subsides. I can think clearly again. I am in a dangerous place, but panic won't help me. Taking one final glance towards the way I came, I push off from the wall, deciding to venture deeper into the labyrinth. My steps are measured and careful, my bare feet making little sound against the stone floor. Each intersection I come across... I choose my path based on intuition, always veering right when in doubt. I keep my hand trailing along the wall, feeling the rough surface beneath my fingertips. It gives me a strange sense of comfort, a tangible connection to my surroundings. But every so often, my hand would brush against this slick patch of wall, and I'd jerk away, startled by the icy cold touch of what I realize is the same luminescent fungi illuminating the maze. While a light is meager, it's enough for me to make out the path before me. The light casts eerie, shifting shadows that seem to dance and dart with my every move. My eyes continuously scan the path ahead, the flickering light playing tricks on my vision. I'm on high alert, every creak echoing like a gunshot. Every drop of water falling from the cavern ceiling sounds like a hammer against an anvil. As I push deeper, the tunnels begin to change. They grow narrower and more winding. The luminous fungi become less frequent, their soft glow barely enough to illuminate the path a few feet ahead. A wave of claustrophobia sweeps over me, but I shove it down. I can't afford to panic now. My senses are on high alert, straining to pick up any sign of the monster that roared earlier. 
but apart from my own breathing and the beat of my heart, there is no other sound. Suddenly, a different sound slices through the silence. The unmistakable rustling of something large moving through the tunnels. My heart leaps into my throat. I freeze mid-step and start listening. It's distant, but getting closer. I realize I need to find a place to hide. Glancing around, I notice a small crevice in the wall to my right. It's barely large enough to fit into, but it's my only chance. I squeeze myself into the narrow space, and my heart pounds as the sounds draw nearer. As I press my back into the cool, damp stone, I hold my breath, trying to silence the loud thumps of my heart. The rustling grows louder and closer, and then I feel it, a vibration in the ground beneath me, a low hum in the air. The monster is near. I can hear its heavy breathing now, a deep sound that sends shivers down my spine. The air changes as it passes by my hiding spot, carrying a musky, metallic scent. I close my eyes, praying it doesn't detect me. Just as abruptly as they started, the sounds fade. I wait, tamping a hundred heartbeats before daring to breathe again. As I slowly uncurl from the crevice, my entire body trembles. I realize that I'm not just trapped in this parallel world. I'm also being hunted. The smell of the monster still lingers in the air, a harsh reminder of the proximity of my predator. Every instinct screams at me to keep moving, so I force my trembling legs forward. As I journey deeper into the labyrinth, I pay close attention to the echo of my footsteps, the way sound seems to bounce off the walls, and how the tunnels distort and amplify it. I start to experiment, tapping on the stone walls and listening to the echoes. That's when I start to notice patterns. Certain tunnels carry the echoes further, others seem to absorb the sound. I begin to discern the faintest differences in the way my taps echo back to me. Using this newfound understanding, I manage to navigate this place more confidently, avoiding paths where my sounds echo loudly. Hours turn into days, or maybe it's the other way around. The concept of time becomes meaningless here. With each passing moment, I become more attuned to this place and understand it better. The tunnel I'm currently navigating is wider than most, the luminescent fungi casting an otherworldly glow that lights up the stone walls in an eerie dance of shadows and lights. My bare feet crunch on the gravel beneath me as I move, the echoes bouncing around and filling the silence. Each step is methodical, and each breath is measured. My senses are attuned to the labyrinth, to the unique sounds that are my only means of navigation in this world. As I trace my fingers along the wall, I notice a change in the texture. It's smoother here, almost polished. I stop and squint in the dim light. There's a small alcove in the wall, something I haven't encountered in the labyrinth so far. Nestled within it is an object unlike anything I've seen before. It's a relic. Its surface is smooth with symbols engraved in it and oddly warm to the touch. A faint, purring hum seems to emanate from within it. I crouch down to examine it, and the sound of my movement reverberates around the tunnel. I extend a hand, my fingers brushing the surface of the relic. It vibrates under my touch, the hum growing louder, the surface of the relic lighting up with a faint, pulsating glow. It's responding to me, I realize. With a sudden burst of courage, I grasp the relic firmly in my hand. An intense, sonic boom bursts from it, echoing off the tunnel walls and reverberating through the maze. I stumble backward, startled by the intensity of the sound. My ears start to ring in the sudden silence that follows. As the ringing subsides, I look down at the relic in my hand. This could be a weapon. I realize a way to disorient the creature. I pocket the relic carefully and press on. With the relic now in my possession, I proceed through the labyrinth with newfound determination. Each sound now feels less like a threat, and more like a tool I can potentially exploit. I decide to start experimenting with the way it responds to touch and pressure. I find myself stationed at a junction of three tunnels, the best place to test it. The relic feels alive in my hand, pulsating with a rhythmic hum that seems to sync with the beating of my heart. I hold it tightly, its strange, warm texture contrasting with the cold stone around me. My first test is simple. I press my thumb into one of the relic's engraved markings. The hum intensifies and I quickly pull back my hand. The abrupt increase in noise catches me off guard. The sound bounces around the tunnels, an echo that twists and turns around the corners before fading into the all-encompassing silence. My heart beats hard against my chest as I wait for a response from the monster, but it never comes. I exhale slowly, easing the tension out of my shoulders. The noise from the relic isn't necessarily a beacon for the beast, but a tool I can use. Emboldened by the first test, I try again, 
this time pressing on two markings simultaneously. The relic responds instantly, its humming escalating into a vibrant drone that fills the tunnel and sets my ears ringing. This pattern continues as I experiment with different combinations of the engravings. Each combination leads to a different sound, a unique sonic signature. Some are high and piercing, others low and resonating. Some travel far, their echoes filling the tunnels, while others are quickly absorbed by the stone. I learn to modulate the intensity of the sounds to make soft hums and overwhelming sonic booms. And with each boom, I feel a faint but discernible pulse of energy, a ripple in the fabric of this world. I activate the relic again, causing a sonic boom louder and more intense than any I've created before. Suddenly, a shimmering tear appears in the air in front of me, a swirl of colors I've never seen. It's a portal, I realize, a potential way back home. But the moment is fleeting. The portal flickers and fades, leaving me staring at an empty space. Despite the portal's brief appearance, its existence confirms my suspicion. The relic is not just a weapon. It's a key. A key that might get me out of this nightmare and back to my own world. Now I have a clearer goal. I need to learn to control this portal to manipulate the relic to get me home. I'm navigating a narrower tunnel when I hear it. A low, deep growl. It echoes around me, the sound amplified by the confined space. The hair on the back of my neck stands up, and I freeze in my tracks, with the relic clutched tightly in my hand. The growl turns into a roar, a terrifying resonant sound that seemed to shake the very walls of the tunnel. The air grows heavy with tension as the creature draws closer. I can hear its heavy footsteps, the scraping of its claws against the stone, and the ragged sound of its breathing. Fear rises in my chest, threatening to choke me, but I force it down, remembering the relic in my hand. I press down on the engravings, and the relic responds immediately, emitting a sonic boom. The sound reverberates through the tunnel, the intense noise distorting the air around me. My ears ring in the aftermath, but I don't have time to recover. I turn and run, my footfalls echoing behind me. I can hear the beast's confusion, its roars growing more desperate as the echo of the boom disorients it but I know the effect won't last long. I need to put as much distance as I can between it and me. As I run, I trigger another sonic boom, further disorienting the creature. The adrenaline wanes as the roars grow distant, and I find a safe spot to rest. Suddenly, a growl reverberates through the tunnels, but it's closer now. I grip the relic tightly, and my knuckles turn white. The roars grow louder and more desperate, and I know the beast is closing in. I press down on the engravings, but my trembling fingers fumble. Then I see it emerging from the shadows of the tunnel. The creature is a monstrous embodiment of every childhood nightmare, a horrifying entity that has lurked in the recesses of my imagination. Its body is massive, towering over me like a monstrous gargoyle sprung to life. I guess it'd be at least 15 feet tall. Its skin is made of slate gray scales, a spotted pattern that shimmers eerily under the glow of the luminescent fungi. The scales run in ridges, giving the creature an armored look. Its eyes are a chilling bright yellow, glowing like bioluminescent orbs in the dark tunnels. They burn with a fierce, predatory hunger that sends chills down my spine. They're set deep within its skull. Beneath those eyes, a mouth yawns wide, lined with rows upon rows of jagged, razor-sharp teeth. The teeth are like shards of obsidian glistening in the dim light. They're seen a dark red. The creature's claws are just as terrifying, long and sharp, each one resembling a deadly scythe. They're smeared with a dark substance that I don't want to identify. But what truly marks the beast as a creature of nightmares is its ears. They're large and bat-like and move rhythmically, constantly adjusting and moving, perfectly attuned to the sounds of the maze. It's these ears that make the creature the lethal hunter it is, able to navigate through the echoing maze with an uncanny precision. A roar rumbles from deep within its throat, deafening and terrifying. But I stand my ground with my fingers finally finding the right engravings on the relic. The sonic boom erupts around us, but this time the creature is ready. It lunges at me, its massive form moving with a speed that defies its size. I dive to the side, but I'm not quick enough. A sharp pain rips through my side as the creature's claw slashes across my body. I cry out in pain, the sound swallowed by the echoing roar of the beast. Despite the pain, I roll away, narrowly avoiding another swipe of the creature's claws. I clutch my side, feeling the warmth of my blood seeping through my fingers. I need to get away. 
I need to fight back. I press down hard on the relic, forcing a deafening side boom to erupt from it. The creature roars in pain, its ears ringing from the noise. It recoils, covering its ears, and I use this opportunity to escape. I stumble through the tunnels, the pain in my side making it difficult to move. The labyrinth seems to spin around me, and it feels as if the walls are closing in. But I keep moving. Finally, I find a narrow alcove and collapse inside, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The silence is a harsh contrast to the thunderous roars that still echo in my ears. Then a low growl echoes through the tunnel, followed by the chilling scrape of claws against the stone. My heart freezes. The creature is closer now, its roars reverberating off the stone walls of the labyrinth. I squeeze my eyes shut, praying it hasn't heard me, hasn't smelled my fear. But my prayers go unanswered. With a roar that fills the alcove, the creature lunges into my hiding place, its monstrous form blocking out the little light there is. I react instinctively, my fingers pressing down hard on the relic's engravings. A sonic boom explodes from the relic, the sound waves crashing against the creature and bouncing off the walls. The creature reels back, its ears twitching wildly as it struggles to locate me amidst the disorienting echoes. But it recovers quickly. With a swift, furious swipe of its claw, it lunges for me. I roll away, narrowly avoiding the deadly claws. But the creature is relentless. It lunges again with its roars filling the alcove. With my heart in my throat, I press down hard on the relic, triggering another sonic boom, louder and more powerful than any before. The sound wave rips through the alcove, the echoes thundering off the walls. The creature roars in pain, its large ears bleeding from the sound. As I scramble to put distance between myself and the creature, I risk a glance back, my breath catching in my throat. The creature rises on the ground, its monstrous form convulsing as it tries to recover from the sound. I'm about to turn away when I catch sight of something behind me. It's a swirling mass of color and light, a portal that's appeared seemingly out of nowhere. I can hardly believe my eyes. Could it be my way out, a way back home? I pull my gaze away from the creature, my eyes wide as I stare at the portal. It pulses with energy, the color shifting and swirling like a psychedelic whirlpool. Taking a deep breath, I brace myself and step towards the portal. It pulses almost as if it senses my approach. The colors swirl faster and the light grows brighter. As I approach, the air around the portal crackles with energy, raising the hairs on my skin. It's like stepping into a field of static electricity. With one last look back at the monstrous creature writhing in pain, I step into the portal. The world shifts around me. It's like diving into a deep pool of water, the world suddenly blurring around me. I feel a sense of vertigo, my stomach jumps as if I'm falling. The colors of the portal swirl around me, faster and faster, blinding me with their intensity. I close my eyes, feeling disoriented. I feel like I'm being stretched, pulled apart, and put back together again. It's an indescribable sensation, a mixture of pain and exhilaration. Then, just as suddenly as it began, it ends. The sensation of falling stops. The colors fade from behind my closed eyelids. I feel solid ground beneath my feet once more. I open my eyes, leaking against the sudden change in light. The first thing I notice is the darkness of the night sky, dotted with familiar constellations. The moon casts its silver light across the landscape, bathing everything in an ethereal glow. The stars twinkle overhead. It's a sight I never thought I'd see again. Next, my eyes fall on the lake. The surface is calm and peaceful, mirroring the starry sky above. It's hard to believe that this serene body of water was my doorway to a horrifying world of nightmares. It looks so ordinary, so harmless. Looking around, I see the tall fence that encloses the lake, the barbed wire glinting in the moonlight. The hole I'd slipped through is still there. The guarded mystery of this place now holds a different meaning to me. I feel the cool grass under my bare feet and a fresh air filling my lungs. Every sensation is a sweet reminder, I'm home. In the distance, I see the lights of my town, and further off, I see the glow from my bedroom window. As I stand there, taking it all in, relief washes over me. I've made it back, I survived. And with that realization, I can't help but feel a sense of overwhelming gratitude. My body feels heavy. The adrenaline that has been my fuel in that strange place is starting to recede, leaving in its wake a profound exhaustion. 
The injuries from the creature's attack throb with a delayed intensity. My muscles ache from exertion, but it's a good kind of pain. It's the pain of survival. With wobbly legs, I start to make my way back home. As I walk, the sounds of the night form a comforting melody around me. When I reach my house, I pause and glance up at my window. I then look back at the lake one last time, the still water reflecting the starlight. It seems so peaceful, so ordinary, yeah, I know the truth. I know the nightmare that waits beneath its surface. Entering my house, I quietly climb the stairs to my room, not wanting to wake my parents. The familiar sights and smells of home wash over me, providing a soothing feeling to my nerves. My bed is inviting, the soft sheets are a contrast to the harsh reality of that place. As I lay there staring at the ceiling, the events of the night replay in my mind. The roaring creature, the echoing maze, the pulsing relic, it all seemed so surreal, so distant, yet you know it was real. The pain in my body and the lingering fear in my mind are all reminders of the terrifying ordeal I've been through. But I've also emerged stronger and more resilient. I've faced my fears, outsmarted a monster, and survived a nightmare. And for that, I'm grateful. Finally, exhaustion pulls me into a deep, dreamless sleep, and the echoing roars of the creature fade into a distant memory. The morning sun peeks through the cracks of my blinds, painting stripes of golden light across my room. I blink, squinting against the sudden brightness. It's a new day. A day I wasn't sure I would see again. I look around my room, the familiar surroundings holding a newfound comfort. The posters on the wall, the pile of books on the shelf, even the worn-out rug under my bed, they all seem more vivid and more real. I push back the sheets and gingerly swing my legs over the side of the bed, grimacing at the pain from the creature's attack. I make my way to the window, drawing back the blinds to reveal a lake in all its morning glory. The water is calm, reflecting the sky's pastel hues. It's a picture of serenity to find the terror that lies beneath its surface. I know I will never look at that lake the same way again. It's no longer just a guarded mystery, a source of town rumors. It's a doorway to a nightmarish world, a world I hope I never see again.